Welcome back to the Grow Yourself podcast. We have one of the world's most inspiring gardeners. You're going to love her. So uh, let's talk about it. Tell us your name, where you're from, the name of your business, and uh, and what your business does. Uh, I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, thank you. My name is Sarah Rubens. I'm from Davidson, North Carolina, which is just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. My business is Seed to Sanctuary, and we do garden design, installation, and coaching primarily. So amazing. Okay, so you are a garden consultant. Have you always been a pro gardener? No. No? <laughs> oh my goodness, no. Did you like grow up on a farm or something? Like how did you become pro enough to help other people garden? Gosh, I found this book called the uh, Kitchen Garden Academy. Have you heard of it before? Kitchen Garden? <laughs> I'm Kitchen Garden Revival? Oh, revival? Never heard of it. I mean, who yeah. wrote it? Yeah, well, this girl some, seemed how, how she found me. Anyway, truth be told, uh, Nicole, I, like so many people, was stuck at home during COVID. Yeah. Needed to look for something else to do because I was already working full time. And it's like, I'm not going to give them more than the eight hours a day they deserve. I got to find something else to do. Exactly. And um, I thought, I'm going to dabble in gardening. I had never gardened before Ever. I didn't, Seriously. 100% serious. I didn't grow up on my grandparents' farm. My parents didn't garden. I didn't even have an herb garden before. No way. Yeah. Seriously. Okay, so you're in COVID. What do you do for a living at the time? Uh, I was working in corporate America, technology. I was like an account manager. You know, well, kind you're... of a... You know, people only came to me when they had problems. But you're like a fancy girl. You're like in a suit. <laughs> Well, you used to be, yeah, yeah. before COVID. <laughs> yeah. And you're, you're like you're like working at a, a, a computer uh -huh. in your office. Eight to five. Corporate girly. Traveling on business. Oh, you're in business class. You got your suitcase, your briefcase, you're going places. And then suddenly you're stalled in your home and it's COVID. Yes and no. I actually already was working remotely. My okay. job was a remote job, but I was, you know, basically beholden to my office slash desk you know, eight hours a day. Okay. So we're in the middle of COVID and you're like, I, I'm, I'm, I can be corporate so I can also be garden, right? So I'm going to start gardening. And did you just like, you know, run down to Home Depot and grab some wood and some soil bags and go for it? Not really. Uh, first, I, I reached out to my neighborhood, like community Facebook page or whatever, and said, I want to learn how to vegetable garden. Is there anybody out there that can help me? Oh, so smart. And what's funny is I just remembered that I had done that. I kind of had forgotten about it. And really nobody responded. Oh, so um, sad. So I had a couple people that you know said I can come and they want to talk about flowers and stuff like that. I had a landscape guy that I said, could you build me a couple raised beds? I didn't know anything about raised beds. I didn't know that really they need to be more than one foot. I didn't know that they shouldn't be pressure treated lumber. I did it wrong first. Yeah. But um, I had success and I'm like, this is right before COVID hit. So then when COVID hit, I decided I want to go all in. Yeah. And I read the Kitchen Garden Revival. Oh, so fun. And I kept on, I was just so intrigued by the process and just the philosophy around it, the beauty of it. And I was trying to jerry rig my little stupid beds that I had built incorrectly. <laughs> the beds are offended. You I called know. them stupid. You know. I wanted to figure out how could I get a moon arch into my one foot bed, you know? Yes. All I wanted was the moon arch. And my husband, God love him, he just said, You know what, Sarah? We've got nothing going on. We can't travel. We can't spend money on anything else. If you want to just rip it out and start all over again, you can. Good husband, happy yeah. wife, happy life. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Exactly. Good job, husband. So that's what I did. I ripped it out, started all over again, and built it exactly to the specifications page by page through the Kitchen Garden Revival. Oh, that's so amazing. And then I did this stuff that you tell us or we all should do. I posted it on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Graham in the garden. And people started reaching out to me saying, oh, my God, Sarah, your garden is so beautiful. Can you help me? You were the answer to your own problems. You were the answer to that Facebook post, right? Absolutely. You were like, nobody else came to my aid, so I'm going to come to other people's aid. What a full circle moment, right? It was pretty phenomenal. I mean, that's pretty cool. You're like posting and asking for help and crickets. No one's answering. And within a year, you're posting and people are asking you for help. Talk about having imposter syndrome. <laughs> That's cool. I love this story. Okay, so we're now like May, June, July in 2020. Uh -huh. Okay, and you've 
you read my book. Thank you for following directions. Uh, your garden was beautiful. I remember you posted it in the Kitchen Garden Academy group, and I was like, this girl is literally, I mean, it was picture perfect, beautiful garden. And and then suddenly I saw you uh, building a garden coaching business. Actually, I think I saw you put in a garden for a restaurant in Davidson. You're absolutely right. Um, I had walked past this location a zillion times uh, walking through town and was uh, right behind a, 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 a restaurant right in the middle of town that had you know really great visibility and so forth. And next to their parking lot, they kind of had this forgotten plot of land, maybe 25 feet by 25 feet or slightly bigger than that. And I don't know what possessed me to do it, but I will because I've walked by it a thousand times. But literally, I picked up my phone, took a picture of this overgrown hodgepodge, and sent it to uh, a neighbor of mine that happened to be the developer of this building that the restaurant was in. Uh-huh. And I said, "Hey, Mike, what are you going to do with this sad little piece of land? It needs some love. Um, I got an idea for you. Love it." And he's like writes me back what are you talking about I said come meet me someday you know in my garden I've got an idea for you and he hadn't seen my garden even though he just lived down the street but anyway a couple days later he walks in to my yard I'm like hey thanks for coming and we walk around the corner and I said this is what I want to do for your yard your that little piece of land and he's like oh my god Jaw dropped. Jaw dropped. Cause Big it was, eyes. It looked it was exactly like Nicole's gardens are supposed to look I mean it was like I followed her little protocol and recipe, and by God, it works. And I was here I am showing it off already. Oh, my goodness. I and love this story. He said to me, oh, I love that. I would love to do that. But A, I don't know who's going to build it. And B, you know, then we have a problem with who's going to maintain it. And you're like, And right me? then and there, I started my business. I said, I'm going to. Yes. I, I started a business to do this. I hadn't started a business to do it yet, but I did right then. You fake it till you make it. I did. And the what do they say? The opportunity of a lifetime. You got to seize it in the lifetime of the opportunity. Absolutely. That is not the moment to say, oh. Um, I'll get back to you. I'll get no. back to you, right? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. What a cool, I mean, such genius entrepreneur at work. I have to hand it to you to like right in that moment, see a place, know the opportunity, show the person you literally walked him into the potential right so you're inspiring him you're showcasing your work there's just so much incredible entrepreneurial skill right there um so so fun okay so clearly you're like you're not just gardening yourself you're gardening for restaurants in davidson north carolina so will you bring us through what a year in the garden looks like what does a year in your garden looks like we can look like we can start with january so quite frankly I, in January and February, I kind of use that as an opportunity for uh, rest and rejuvenation and a little bit of you know strategy. Mm-hmm. And I recommend to my, my fellow gardeners, uh, your garden could use a chance to rest and you could use a chance to rest. Mm-hmm. So um, that's kind of the way January is. February, we definitely are, you know, it's cold. It's not, we get some freezing, but um, it's just a good chance to kind of, you know, give yourself a a, a breather, I, I would say. February, we're starting to gear up, talking about doing planting plans and um, what are we going to plant, making sure that we have, I have my, my growers growing the plants for me and so forth. I tell you what, March 1st, boom, we are in the in all of the gardens, planting them up for the spring garden. And that's the wonderful, you know, brassicas and lettuces and beets and carrots and all the really fun things to get started with. And everybody's so excited about starting in March. Yeah, because we're rested. Yeah, we're rested. We took a nap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, what's really funny is that, you know, my clients are like, well, I want to plant my tomatoes. No, 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 honey, you Too can't early. plant your tomatoes yet. So I uh, help my clients understand that. And we just watch those uh, plants grow and thrive all the way till, you know, our um, – Last frost date is usually April 15th, but I don't trust that because inevitably we get a late frost early May. Okay. So um, I am uh, just enjoying the garden then, but boy, tell you what, May 1st comes and boom, we are pulling out the the stuff that is spent and uh, we are uh, adding our tomatoes, our peppers, our squashes, all the wonderful, beautiful vining plants and the things that most gardeners, that's what they picture growing. They don't realize that they could be growing things in the spring. Right. And then in the summer, we continue to keep those going. I'm teaching my clients how to tend, to prune, to harvest, 
uh, pest control, disease control, all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then in September, we're pulling out the spent um, the spent things that happen during the summer, but I leave, leave the tomatoes and peppers in, but the squashes and things like that are usually pretty much done. Okay. Back into bringing in kind of a repeat of the, of the spring crops. Love the it. Brassicas. Mm -hmm. And uh, that takes us all the way through uh, basically November. I just literally pulled out tomatoes like a week ago. Whoa. And uh, December, I'm, I'm working on getting the, the gardens kind of tucked in for the winter. Uh, pull, take out the, it, just kind of clean them up a bit. I don't pull everything out. I let the roots and stuff decompose because that's good for the soil. Cover it up with leaves okay. and tuck it in for the winter. And then uh, February, we hit repeat. Then it's like the story starts all over again. It starts all over again. But Mother a little Nature, bit better. Mother Nature has it figured out. I love this. Wow. So really, I mean, what I heard from you is is January is like the only month of the year in Davidson, North Carolina, when you're just kind of like not in the garden much. By February, by the end of February, you're clearing, you're getting ready, you're prepping. And then March, you're off to the races. And that carries you all the way until November, December. Yeah, so I tell my clients that we have 10 months, a 10 months growing season. You certainly could wow. grow more if you want to, but I just find that most people just need, a, just need a little bit of a rest. Yeah, so would you say it's like mid-December till mid-February is the two-month break? Yes. Perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love it. And like we're all pretty busy during that time anyway, right? Exactly. Yeah. I love this so much. Okay, so let's say we're right in the middle of like the full, like when you walked that chef, what was he the chef or the owner? The owner. When you walk him into your garden, what would have been, and your garden was just like spectacular mm -hmm. at that moment, what was a fun thing to bring inside and make for dinner or lunch or breakfast from the garden during that season? Well, oh, that was so much fun because actually this was right about the time when people were starting to learn how to behave into this weird new world called COVID and mm -hmm. what could we do and how could we get together with people and everybody was feeling so isolated and so forth. And so I started to do this fun thing, which was um, lunch in the garden. Oh, and so cool. Every week, um, I just needed, I was starving, no pun intended, but I was starving for intentional interaction with yeah. people. Yep. I wasn't interested in being in a big group. I didn't want to have a bunch of small conversations. I just wanted to sit down with a friend and say, what have you been up to? Yes. So what I did was I set up a table on my screen porch outside. So uh -huh. it was, you know, outside safe. And um, I would invite one person over for lunch on a Friday afternoon. And whatever I made was all garden centric. So every every quote unquote course out of the lunch, I'm not trying to make you feel like it was a fancy catered thing. It was like we I'm, are thinking fancy. No, right no, now, no, Sarah. no. So like I would start off a course with you know some iced tea and it had a sprig of uh, rosemary or you know fresh mint in it. You yeah. know, and then we would have a little snack and maybe it was like um, a little piece of crostini with a some herb infused cream cheese and a slice of a cherry tomato on top of it. And then the lunch would be, the main course would be like a fresh herb quiche. or And Ooh. then the salad would have, of course, spinach and Swiss chard. So each element of the meal had something out of the garden. So great. And um, sometimes I would make like scones with, you know, fresh herbs and stuff in it. It it gave me so much joy and it gave my friends so, so much joy. And it just made me realize how much I l the the garden gave me joy. It just gave me so much joy, and it gave me so much joy to share it with people. Yeah, I love it. You know, it's it's here. It's so amazing to hear. Um, like you're telling this story and all these dishes, and I'm thinking to myself like. A year prior to this, this woman didn't even know how to garden. And a year later, like you're you're helping people through one of the biggest crises we've experienced, um, not just with something you've learned to do for yourself, but you've turned this into a community thing. I just think it's phenomenal. And I, I do think it's built into the garden, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's just something about the way these plants produce that uh, we don't get abundance of everything but I feel like the things that are successful they're like overly successful you yeah. know where it's like um, I made so much that you're just going to have to call somebody yeah. it like forces community it's like built in into the DNA of the garden I just love how you picked up on that like immediately that's that's so good all right so you literally sound like you've never ever 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 had a mistake <laughs> had a that F word, you know, the fail, had something that didn't quite work out. So can you dig way back down into your memory and find at least one plant 
one thing that you've grown or maybe that your clients have grown, somebody where it didn't quite work out the way you hoped, just so we can think that you're like a human being and not like, <laughs> you know, like a fairy godmother in the garden. Ever had a fail in the garden? Absolutely. She literally can't think of it. No, I, no I'm, I'm seeing <laughs> your face here and I'm, I'm seeing the look of like, I'm searching and searching my catalog in my brain and there's nothing there. No, I got it, honey. I got it. no. Actually, I have so many ideas that I'm trying to figure out which one is the best. Okay, okay. I feel <laughs> I feel comforted because yes. when I when I saw your eyes rolling, I was like, she's literally never had a failure, and and I'm feeling like a little a little embarrassed. No, I've got one. I've got a good one for okay, you. And bring I, it. I tell all my clients as I'm especially when I'm planting up their spring their summer garden. Yeah. I do not plant summer squash. Okay. Because it is just so difficult with the squash bugs too oh they're so gross. and they just infest in it and they it, and once they get in you can't get rid of them yeah so i have had no success with growing squash and so i tell myself and i tell my clients that is a perfect way to support your local farmer's market there we go we are not planting squash in your garden i love it because it's yeah. just heartache right it's you're, just not worth it you're it's just, just not worth it you're just asking for heartache Exactly. Yeah, I have plants like that too that I just gave up on. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, I tried it and it, it didn't quite work out. And it took a lot of space and a lot of time and a lot of effort. And just like you, you're, you're moving into the not worth it category. Well, and particularly for my, my coaching clients, I don't want them to feel that they've are a failure that they can't garden because they got the godforsaken squash bug. Everybody yeah. gets the squash bug. So just Get rid of the squash. Yes. I love I, I say this phrase to a lot of people in the garden when they're just getting started and they think it's their, you know, that it's just not working. They don't have a green thumb. I say, say it after me. It's not your fault. <laughs> like this is not a reflection of you. It's just nature. All right. So that's one simple little failure. And I can like concur. I've only had about 5,000 squash borers <laughs> in my history. What's a success story? What's a client you've gotten to work with where you were like, oh, my goodness, I could do this 100 times over? Is there someone you've enjoyed so much that um, it just made your business work worth all the hard work? A hundred and fifty percent. I can't even tell you. I love all of my clients. I really do. I don't have one person that I think to myself, ooh, do I really have to go see them today? No, it's been so, so, so wonderful. But I do have one particular client that uh, struggled with, uh, she struggles with rheumatoid arthritis. Oh, wow. And uh, she realized that being outside mm -hmm. in the sun, mm -hmm. in the fresh air, getting her hands in the dirt, just made her filled her made her body feel physically better but it also just made her soul feel better she wow. just so she had done uh patio gardening before mm -hmm. and she um found me and um actually as a lead through the gardenary referral program oh amazing she found me and truth be told um, her garden is her home is two and a half hours away from me so i initially started talking with her about that i would just do a virtual design for her and that she could find somebody up in her neck of the woods to build it and that I could do a little bit of, of virtual coaching. But the more I talked with her, the more I realized I just I just wanted to help her. I just mm. wanted to help her. And so I I uh, reached out to my my crew that does the installations and I said, I think we have a I think I have a pretty big opportunity. Would you be willing to travel there for this opportunity? And he's like, Yeah, you know, if it's in the winter months I can do that. So I ended up building her an absolutely gorgeous, beautiful, huge garden, and um, we planted it for the first time in March, and in May, you absolutely cannot believe how abundant and gorgeous this garden was. Really? And she is just living her best life in the garden, and she has, the, she has a community that comes and helps her. She gives tons of food. It's way more food than she needs. Yeah. But she is so generous and kind. She gives it away. She is just, it's just been such a wonderful journey to go through with her. And we've become quite personal friends. And um, I had a tragic situation happen in my life this year. She had a daughter getting married. And we just have begun to do life together. Wow. All through the garden. Wow. Yeah. That is really neat. It's been awesome. Yeah. And there is nothing like chronic pain that makes you want to find some distraction. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's healthy and good for you. 
And how neat, too, that you actually gave her a strength. I gave her a sense of purpose of something to do every day, to get outside, to walk, to move. And, um, you know, she said some days it's just having bad flare-up, and it's, it's hard. But then she'd had friends would come over and help her. And it was just a beautiful example of how she adopted the gardenery lifestyle. She really did. Wow. Yeah. Amazing for you, too. And, like, I know that that drive's got to be, that's a lot. And so I just, I think that's amazing that you're like, this is a sacrifice worth making. Actually, ironically, though, I ended up finding another client just a half an hour away from her. Well, of course you did. <laughs> and then another, and then another, and no, then another. Yep, up there, I just have those two. Well, but for I, now. But I can, I can, you know, I, I generally can hit them both on the same day. And you know what? I just, I'd use the time in the car to listen to podcasts or listen to a book on tape. And it's, it's fine. I mean, it's not something I'd want to do all the time, but once worth a month. It for her. It's worth it for me. It's worth it for them. That's so cool. Yeah. Okay. So I have a request. Oh gosh. Okay. So if you follow Sarah, which we'll talk about in a second, her business called Seed to Sanctuary. She's on Instagram. I think you're even on TikTok. A little bit. And, um, and she grows this thing called a loofah gourd. And I wanted to ask if you'd be willing to teach us all how to grow loofah. Absolutely. Okay, bring it on, sister. Teach us the step-by-step. Because step. you're in North Carolina. A lot of people think you can only grow loofah if you're in the deep south, if it's really hot where you live. And uh, you literally just gave me a loofah sponge. <laughs> and, like, I'm beside my – I'm ready to go home right now and take a shower. Yeah. Like, Start I'm, exfoliating, girlfriend. You I start am, exfoliating. Yeah, I heard that their dry brushing is in. And so <laughs> I am pumped for this loofah. I want to grow my own <laughs> So will you teach us how? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So it takes a long time to grow. So I think North Carolina is probably about as far north as you really can, you know, where I'm in so grown 7B. Okay. Um, so I plant the seeds like in April, right after the last frost. And it's just like a little, looks like a pumpkin seed. Indoor, outdoor? Plant them direct so outdoor. Wow. Um, and I, uh, so of course I do all raised bed gardening. But in this case, I have a gigantic pergola mm -hmm. that has like a 12 foot table underneath it, like a farm table. And there's pots on every corner of the pergola that have irrigation in them. So I put the loofah seeds in those pots. So the vines started to trellis up all the pergola and all the way across Okay, it. hold up. Wait a minute. <laughs> How big are the pots? What's the dimension of the pots? Oh, gosh. They're big. They're, they're, they're probably three feet tall okay you know great big like you would put all your big summer three feet tall are they a foot wide two feet wide probably two, two feet wide two feet wide three feet tall you've got them filled all the way top to bottom with soil uh-huh and like our gardenery like the 103 or something yeah, else yeah but this is where this is where i have like my paint my flower my summer flowers are in this is like my you know my pop of color got it and you oh. put one seed per pot no 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 i put a, a number of seeds per pot three seeds per pot five seeds per pot and you <sighs> spread it out and you let all of them grow to maturity, uh -huh. all three to five, sure per pot, yeah, in just two square feet, two by, yeah, yeah, because the vines are just going to grow up, and they've got these wonderful tendrils, and they're just going to grab onto Loving that post. Loving you for this intensive planting moment here. <laughs> okay, so you put the seed in the ground in May as soon as frost has passed, mm -hmm. and you're watering with every the day. irrigation every single day, drip, drip. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how long does it take for them to sprout? Longer than you think. Um, two weeks? Probably longer. Probably like at least three weeks before I could. I oh, was like, wow. oh, are they really growing? It, it's, they take a long time. Why do plants do this to us? They literally give us this thing where we're like, did we fail? Like, did we do it yeah. wrong? So then guess what? You plant more. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, mother of God, I've got so much loofah. <laughs> <laughs> the quote of the day, oh, mother of God, I have got so much loofah. That's a sentence I'm pretty sure has never been said before. <laughs> In the history of mankind. All right, so uh, so it's sprouting, it's growing, it's going, and then it's going to start. Do you have to help it vine? Barely. Really? Yeah, the barely. The tendrils do the work. Yeah, so, you know, I've got this big post on my pergola. I was going to so say, I how to, thick are the posts? They're, they're thick. Like a, so I what I did was I, 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 t I took some uh, twine and I wrapped it around the post just mm -hmm. till it could get itself established to start to cl climb up to like the first brace that it could grab onto mm -hmm. and then it is like jack and the beanstalk i mean you wake up the next day and whoo it's just grown like crazy and it's these beautiful huge yellow flowers wow that become the, know, loofahs. the loofahs so how soon if you plant in may how soon do you get a yellow flower probably 
um, middle of June. Oh my goodness. And then how soon does it start to look like it's going to actually create this real thing? Right away, because you know, every flower becomes a, a fruit. Okay, so there's no male and female. They're all going to make f- fruit. Uh, love your face. I have no love idea. Love the face. <laughs> the face says to me, Nicole, why are we sexing flowers? I know it. I'm, I, 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 I don't know. Okay. I do know, I but I don't have don't to know. take the paintbrush and pollinate myself and well, all I'm that. I don't that. have to do that. I'm loving no. that because you, on top of your pergola, is not a, not <laughs> no. a sight that I, I want to see. But the bees love them, so they're doing it. Love it. Yeah. Bees are just our best friends. Yep. Okay, so then they start to turn into the squashes, Melanie, Gordy type things that they are. And then they're just going to keep growing. You don't have to do anything. Don't do anything to them. And so this is the hardest part. Tell us. They're getting, they're really long and they're really quite heavy. And so I've got all these, you know, green gourds hanging down. And it's mm-hmm. quite a conversation piece. It's like an mm-hmm. obstacle course in your pergola. Kind of, yeah. I mean, it's just people come over for dinner like, what is this? Yeah, and, you, and, you know, then I get to bats. Ta- Exactly. And then I get to talk about it, which, of course, I love to do. Uh-huh. So then you have the waiting game. And you have to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait until about now. Really? Even later. Wow. You cannot har- harvest. Well, you can harvest them to eat, but I, I, don't, I don't do that. Uh-huh. You have to wait until they're completely brown and crunchy on the, on the, still on the vine. And even when they're brown and crunchy, you have to go up and shake it. If you can't hear the seeds like a like a rain stick, yeah, it's not ready. You have to wait until you can shake it, and because if you uh, harvest them too soon, they don't mature anymore. They just they'll just rot. Oh, you have to wait until they are on the vine and they're shaking like that. Got it. With me so far? I'm following. I'm just like I I'm picturing myself with lufa gourds on my head next year, and I'm so happy about it. Yeah. Okay, so they're they're just hanging there all the way like. September, October, we have a first frost yet or no? <laughs> oh, yes. We yes. had a first frost so a couple weeks ago. So the vine is dead. Yeah. So I tried to I tried to save it. I got my landscape, wonderful landscape guy, come over, climb up, you know, 20 feet tall, mm-hmm. climb across this pergola with a great big gigantic tarp, and we draped it mm-hmm. for like three nights. I don't know if it did any good or not, but it made me feel better, yeah, actually. Yeah, that's what it's all about. So then I took the tarp off. The vines are definitely waning, okay. but I still have a boatload of loofahs hanging down. Wow. And so they don't show any evidence of stress. Yeah. So, so I'm, I might be putting loofahs on, on my growing. Christmas tree for all I know. Keep on growing, loofahs. Yeah. Okay, so you're just going to wait until they look brown, shaky, shaky, hear the seeds. Then you're ready to take it down, and then you just peel it. Yeah, this is where the fun begins. Okay. So you uh, you you take a sharp knife. You like cut an end off of either side of it. Imagine a great, great big gigantic thick cucumber. Okay. Mm-hmm. You you take a knife and you kind of score down the middle of all the the skin, and it's literally so crunchy it just cracks right off. And you just peel it off. It's kind of like peel uh, stripping wallpaper. You know, it just comes right off. And then I cut it in in sections. And as soon as you peel it off and you lift it up, all the seeds come running out. So cool. Yeah, which is, and then you have tons of seeds to give to people. And you have loofah for life. Loofah for life. And then I cut it up in sections, like a little, as you imagine, you want a sponge section to be. Uh-huh. And then I give it a quick dose, a douse, excuse me, in um, a diluted Clorox bath just to get any bugs or whatever mm-hmm. nastiness out of it. Mm-hmm. And then you can let it sit and dry yeah or if you're impatient like me mm-hmm. you put it in the air fryer what <laughs> did she just say you put your sponge in the air fryer for th- like three minutes maybe at 300 degrees and they come out and they're dry and crunchy and you're ready to give them away uh, i mean i'm i'm dumbfounded the last thing i thought you were going to say is put your sponge in the air fryer yep okay so cool and then you have Sponges to give everyone for the holidays because it's just in time. Yep. And then you've got a gazillion seeds. So you could actually give people sponges and seeds. I do. And then I have a friend who has goats and she makes me homemade goat milk soap. Yeah. And so I do a little gift packet with a loofah sponge and some seeds and the soap. Oh, you are just too good, Sarah. It's so fun. Okay, I've got two last questions for you. Uh huh. First, what... If you could go back to the moment when you when you were putting out that Facebook post, right, and you started your garden, what would be some advice you would give to to that Sarah who was just about to dig in and start gardening? Just do it. Don't wait till you think you're ready. 
Don't wait till you think you know everything you need to know. Just put your just just begin the process and learn as you go. There's so much content and so much information available, mm-hmm. and ask for help. Ask for help. I love that one. Mm-hmm. You actually even hired a garden coach to help you as you went through, right? Just for my, like a little planting plan or something. The, my very first garden, I didn't know how to do a planting plan. Yeah. And I just, I just, for some reason, I felt intimidated by it. Now I laugh about it because it's really not rocket science. Mm-hmm. Once you learn how to do it, you understand it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I hired somebody to help me. Just do it. Ask for help. And can you imagine, what is this, 2023? So 2019, you were just getting started. In four years, you've, you're no longer in corporate life. Yeah. You are a full-time garden consultant you are literally being requested to drive hours away from your home to help people in the garden. Uh, I mean, how's that feel? It's awesome. It is. I have a job that I can, can. I don't have to ask anybody for permission. Can I do this or can I do that? Can I drive two and a half hours away from this client? I could just make that decision myself. Mm-hmm. Every day I wake up and literally it's like, A rooster that says, oh, my God, the sun is out again today. It's like me. It's like, oh, my God, I get to go out and be in the garden today. I get to talk to people about gardening. I get to do gardening. I get to learn about gardening. I get to post about gardening. It's just like so life-giving. I love that. Amazing. Okay. What's your big, big dream? What's your the legacy you want to leave behind? I want to be known as the lady that transformed our town so that a majority of people in our community are growing something. I want them all to be able to point it back to me. Done. The lady that transformed Davidson, North Carolina into an edible, beautiful, (laughs) loofah-covered city. It's going to happen. I mean, sooner than later pretty sure, especially after everybody listens to this. Oh, I hope so. So how does everybody find you? I love following you. Every single video you post, I watch. And and that's saying something because I don't watch many people's videos. So tell everybody where to find you online. Uh, So it's uh, on Instagram. It's seed, the number two. Got it. Sanctuary. Okay. Uh, Facebook, it's just seed to sanctuary. Mm -hmm. My website's www.seedtosanctuary.com. And the website's going to be T-O. Seed, S-E. Everything is T-O except for Instagram is two. Because of a hacker. Yes. But it's okay. It is okay. Yes. That, as I said, is a first world problem. (laughs) For sure. You guys, if you're listening to this and you're anywhere near Davidson, North Carolina, Sarah Rubens is your woman. You heard it here. She's going to transform her whole town into a beautiful, edible and Lufa growing place, and she's coming for your yard next. <laughs> so follow her online. You're going to be so inspired. Thank you, Sarah. You bring me so much joy. It is literally an honor to be associated with you. And uh, yeah, you're just you. You bring me so much happiness just knowing you're in the world. So Thank you. keep growing. You got this. I got it. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on the Grow Yourself podcast. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for listening to the Grow Yourself podcast. You can keep listening anywhere you love getting your podcast delivered. On Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, iHeartRadio, you name it, we are there for you. And if you want to read the notes and get our free resources to help you grow more, you can go to Gardinary.com slash podcast.